Hi everyone, welcome to the NAND Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about ready to upgrade your ESXi host and overview of the upgrade process. So, okay, as we are aware, VMware latest version is ESXi 8.0 update 2. So now I'm trying to explain you the, the complete overview of the upgrade process. So when we are planning to start the ESX upgrade, first of all, we have to verify the requirements are met. That means we have to validate the minimum hardware and software requirement, whether our ESX host is compatible to upgrade to the ESX 8.0 update to that is hardware validation and software validation is we must have a, all the enough storage space and we have a enough resources available when before going for a upgrade and also when we are planning to upgrade we have to get the respective uh, required downtime minimally 30 to 60 minutes downtime these are all the requirements before we start the upgrade generally we recommend to do only in the planned schedule downtime only we can plan to do the esxi upgrade and we can choose the upgrade method there are multiple methods are available uh, to do the esxi host upgrade from old version like 7 series to 8 series or 6.7 to 8 series so let's say one first common method is prepare our esxi host upgrade and this upgrade option is available in a either we can do it in a graphical user interface or command line or we can use it in a script based and the second option is prepare for ESXi host upgrade with auto deploy. Auto deploy is one of the vCenter feature. Using the auto deploy feature also, we can upgrade our ESXi host. And the third option is prepare for ESXi host upgrade with VLCM. VLCM means vSphere Lifecycle Manager. Using vSphere Lifecycle Manager also, we can upgrade our ESXi host. Previously, LCM name, we call it as a VMware Update Manager. Later, VMware renamed that Update Manager product to LCM, Lifecycle Manager. This Lifecycle Manager will help to upgrade the ESXi host from old version to latest version 8.0 update to. And uh, as I mentioned, ESXi host during the upgrade, we have a, again additional three methods. Upgrade the ESXi host using graphical user interface. Graphical user interface means we can use a ISO file or we can use a, in a virtual CD or we can use a bootable uh, bootable USB. Using that bootable USB, interact. we can uh, interactively, that means using a graphical user interface, we can do interactive upgrade method. That is one option. And another option is script. We can prepare a script for the ESXi host upgrade. And the CLI means command line interface. We can use ESXi CLI commands. Using ESX CLI command, we can upgrade our ESXi host. When you type one single command, ESX host version will be upgraded automatically and later it require a reboot. And auto deploy, it's the same. Uh, even though if you, during the initial ESX host deployment, if we depend on vCenter auto deploy feature, even similarly, when we going for upgrade also, still VMware recommend to use the auto deploy feature to upgrade. And upgrade ESX host using vSphere Lifecycle Manager. Even Lifecycle Manager also will help to upgrade vCenter server, upgrade ESX host, and virtual machine VMware tools and VM hardware version. Everything we can use Lifecycle Manager. So one of the option is ESX upgrade as well. And whatever the upgrade we perform, any of the method we can choose depends on the customer's choice. And finally, we have to perform post upgrade task. Post upgrade task means we have to validate the ESX host version upgrade to latest example 8.0 update to. Once it is upgraded, we have to exit the maintenance mode and verify the monitoring of ESX host and whether all the health status is normal, we can uh, Put it back to the production environment. These are the common post upgrade tasks. When we complete all these post upgrade tasks, it will be upgrading to ESX host. Whatever the upgrade procedure we follow for one host or within a cluster host, the same procedure we can apply for a rest of the ESX host within the environment. Okay. Now let me uh, elaborate some more points. ESX host upgrade in five ways. As we discussed, we have a five ways we can upgrade ESX host. The upgrade requires the host to be out of production for 30 to 60 minutes per version upgrade, depending on the method we chosen. So as we know, we have chosen the method is five methods, GUI, graphical user interface, scripted installation, CLI, like using ESX CLI command, and vSphere lifecycle manager, and auto deploy. Suppose if you 
environment is small, most appropriate method for a small number of hosts. If you have a small number of hosts, we can directly use a GUI method. So as mentioned, installer is run manually from either CD, DVD, or you can use a bootable USB to target the location of an existing ESXi installation. So in later session, I will show you this GUI method, how we can perform an interactive upgrade using GUI method. Okay, and the scripted installation means we requires a script creation and configuration, and it raises or invokes the upgrade script to conduct unattended upgrade of multiple hosts. So script calls the installer from CD, DVD, USB, whatever medium you choose, or we can choose by PXE booting the installer. That is a scripted installation. And the CLI, CLI also this method is appropriate in environments where downtime cannot be taken to upgrade the host. So if there is no downtime, better we can perform the CLI method and reboot, we can do it only during the scheduled window time. Okay, allows for VMs to be systematically migrated off old hosts and moved to new hosts for upgrade to occur with one of the other previous methods listed. Any of the method also we can use and like we can migrate using vSphere vMotion feature or some scenarios as vMotion feature. Suppose if your old ESX host connected to the old storage box, when it comes to the new environment, ESX host connected to the new storage, not only vMotion, we can also use svMotion as well. Okay, and LCM, Lifecycle Manager, recommended upgrade option for any environments using vCenter server. Suppose if the customer have a N number of years access host, that scenario, instead of the first three option, we'll recommend to go with the LCM. LCM will help to do a cluster level upgrade. Suppose our cluster running with 30 plus years access host, all these years access hosts, when you initiate the upgrade, it will start automatically manual migration, no need to do manual migration. DRS will take care of automatic migration and it will automatically place the host into maintenance mode and it will upgrade automatically. Once one host is completed, it will release the host, and again, it will place the same procedure for following second host, third host, and so on. So provided automated task management and coordination with the functionalities such as host maintenance mode and vSphere vMotion and DR. These two features are the key feature when we are working with LCM option for orderly evacuation of virtual machine from existing ESX host. But remember that when we are planning to use LCM, we must have this feature should be enabled and also we should meet these conditions. In case if you have a heterogeneous environment like a ESX host running with the different models and all, that scenario LCM may have some uh, compatibility issues. That time you have to depend on either GUI scripted or CLI methods. And coming to another option is auto deploy. vSphere auto deploy uses PXE pre execution boot infrastructure with host profile, a desired image, or configuration on a cluster level to provision ESX host. When you use initial days, when you use ESX host using auto deploy, even the rec rec recommended option during the upgrade also, VMware recommend to proceed with your auto deploy feature. So if you an ESX host deployed with vSphere auto deploy, you can use auto deploy to reprovision of the host and reboot it with a new image profile or a configuration that you manage on a cluster level. So when we reprovision, what it will do is it will took a new image, either it is a custom image or official VMware image. Even images also, VMware website, we have a different type of ISOs and images. Like a default VMware image, it consists of only ESX ISO, but custom image means it includes all the ESX host hardware drivers like firmware also includes Included. So most of the real-time environment, it recommend to use custom iOS. If it is a HPE box, HPE servers, we can use HPE custom iOS. Similarly for other third-party custom ISOs. If your hardware is Nutanix or Fujitsu, you can use a relevant Fujitsu ISOs or a Nutanix ISO custom with ESX. Okay. So hope you understand the overview of ESX host upgrade process. So there are five, five ways of upgrade. Whatever the your environment is using based on your infrastructure requirement, you can choose the relevant models. Okay, so thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Ignite Cloud Garage channel. If you are already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.